Welcome to Electron Online, and here we have a nice example that works just perfectly with Gauss's law. It's an infinite slab, even though I didn't draw it infinitely, but imagine an infinite slab in all directions with a thickness equal to d. And we're going to use a Gaussian surface to try and figure out what the electric field is like outside and inside the slab. Now, the charge distribution, it's not a constant. It varies with position, with distance away from the center. Uh, when we put the slab at the, at the very origin here of the xy plane, notice that half the slab is on the positive side of the x-axis and the other half of the slab is on the negative side of the x-axis and imagine the z-axis is in this direction. Now, according to the equation here, we can see that when x is zero, the charge density is zero. That means at the middle of the slab, the charge density is zero, then it increases linearly as it reaches the edge in both directions. That's why we use the absolute value sign here indicating its positive charge in both directions. So what is the electric field inside and outside the slab? Well, we can imagine that the electric field at the center of the slab should be zero because there's no charge there. And then we'll increase as you go to the edge. And then, of course, we have to figure out what it will be like outside the, uh, the slab. So let's start with the outside portion. We're going to do the outside first. And so I've, dr I've drawn a Gaussian surface all the way through the slab, but what we're going to do is we're going to only count the charge from the center of the slab to the outside because there's a perfect symmetry there. You can do exact same on the other side. So we can see that half the electric field will be directed in this direction on that side of the slab and the electric field will be directed in that direction on the left side of the slab. So we'll only do one side of the slab. And so we're going to use the equation that the surface integral of E dot dA and of course now we're talking about the electric field on the outside of the slab right here and so the area is going to be this surface right here we don't have to worry about the sides and the top and the bottom of that surface because the electric field will be perpendicular away from the surface so it's only will come out of the far side of that Gaussian surface so E dot dA is going to equal Q inside divided by epsilon sub naught. So we're talking about the charge that's inside the slab right over there. And so if we're going to figure out what the amount of charge in the slab we're going to have to integrate, what we're going to do is find a small little volume element that maybe I should use a different color. I have a red pen right here. So let's start with a small little slice of that. So here's a small little volume element. It goes like this and it goes like that. All right, there we go, that's my small dv. Of course the charge in there is going to be dq. So the dq in there, so we'll write a dq, is equal to the charge density times dv. Now what is dv in this case? Well, let's say that the size is l by l and the thickness would be dx. So this would be equal to l squared dx. That's my dv and my charge density will be rho sub naught times x. So dq is equal to charge density which is rho sub naught times x times dv, which is L squared dx. That's my dq. That's the charge in there. So to find the charge in this whole section right there, we could then say that the total charge is equal to all the little dqs added together, which is equal to, and we can take these constants outside integral signs, so rho sub naught L squared times the integral of x dx, and we're going to integrate from x equals 0 to x equals d over 2. 0 to d over 2. That's the limit of integration from 0 to d over 2, and that would be for x is equal to that. All right, so now we're ready to figure out how much charge there is inside the Gaussian surface from the middle of the slab to the edge of the slab because we're finding the electric field on the outside of the slab first. We can integrate that, and so this is equal to zero sub, uh, rho sub naught L squared times X squared over 2 evaluated from 0 to D over 2. And then notice if we plug in D over 2, we'll get this is equal to rho sub naught L squared. That would be D squared over 4 divided by 2. And then finally, of course, if we then simplify that all the way, we can say that this is equal to rho sub naught L squared D squared over 8. That would be the charge inside the Gaussian surface. And now we go ahead and plug that right in there and see what we get. So the strength of the electric field at the very edge of the surface right there 
is times the area of the surface, which would be L times L or L squared, is equal to the Q inside, which we got right there, which is rho sub naught, L squared, D squared, divided by 8, divided by epsilon sub naught. Then you can see that the L squareds cancel out, and finally we can say that the electric field outside the slab is equal to rho sub naught, D squared, divided by 8 epsilon sub naught. And that would be the electric field strength outside the slab. Notice that it's not dependent on the distance away from the slab, and that makes sense because it's an infinitely large slab. So, and then if we want to write that as an electric field in the vector format, so E would be equal to rho sub naught, D squared, over 8 epsilon sub naught in the x direction. So that's how we would write it as a vector. OK, now let's do the same thing, but inside the slab. What is the electric field somewhere between x equals 0 and x equals d over 2? So now we're just going to go to some point, And let's say we're going to go to a distance. Let's call it a away from the center of the slab and see what the electric field is at that location. So now we're going to do the inside. And so in order to do that, we're going to have to find the, the amount of uh, charge inside the Gaussian surface if, of course, now we stop at this location right there. So let's say we stop right here where it's A away from the center. And so we want to know how much charge there is from there to there. So we do the exact same thing, but my limits are now going to change. Instead of going from 0 to D over 2, I'm only going to go from 0 to A. See what we get now. So maybe a different color would help. So I want to know the charge inside the Gaussian surface. It's going to be equal to the integral of all the little dqs going from x equals 0 to x equals a. And then that is equal to, again, the charge density is rho times x. Notice that the dv is still x squared times dx. So all that is still the same. Nothing changes on our integral right here except for the limits. So that would be equal to rho sub naught l squared times integral x dx from x equals 0 to x equals a. And when we do the integral, we get rho sub naught l x squared over 2 evaluated from 0 to a. And that simply becomes, this would be rho sub naught l squared, I forgot my squared, a squared divided by 2. So that's the charge inside the Gaussian surface. So now we can go ahead and find the electric field inside. So now we want to know the electric field emanating from some point inside the slab directed outward. So that's now the electric field we're looking for. So that would be on the inside right there. So we have the integral of E dot the A is equal to Q inside divided by epsilon sub naught. Again, we want to find the electric field strength, which will be E. It'll be uniform anywhere along the side of that slab. Uh, the area then would be equal to L squared, just like before, and the Q inside, instead of what we had over there, we now have the Q inside equal to this. So that would be equal to rho sub naught L squared times A squared divided by 2, and we still have the epsilon sub naught from there. The L squares cancel out, and the electric field is going to be equal to rho sub naught A squared divided by 2 epsilon sub naught. And if we want to write that in vector format, then of course we write it like this. We write it as the vector E is going to be equal to rho sub naught a squared divided by 2 epsilon sub naught in the x direction. So this would be for the electric field inside the slab. This would be for the electric field outside the slab. Now what we can say is that if a is equal to d over 2, the two should converge. So let's try that. If I plug in d over 2 for a squared, I get rho sub naught d squared over 8 epsilon sub naught, which is what I have there. So the two answers are the same at the edge of the slab, which is good. And let's see, anything else? Let's see, what if x is equal to 0? Well, in this case, remember that a was the position anywhere from the center of the slab to the outside. And if a is equal to 0, you can see then the electric field is equal to 0. So we check both limiting cases, and we get the correct answer in both cases. So that is probably correct. There you go. That's how we find the electric field inside and outside the slab with varying charge.